Okay, so today is March tonight, and it is Monday, new nine weeks. Um, this group and any other group, I am trying to give everybody their nine weeks test grade and a report card grade. So if you weren't in here, so I'll have to do that in a little bit. If I don't get to you today, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, but we're starting statistics. The statistics is basically a myth, like the definition says, a branch of math that deals with collecting, organizing, and interpreting data. Every company, every business, you actually do statistics. You look at your grades. You figure out, should I make a better test grade? Do I need to do my homework more? You are doing statistics when you're doing those things. Um, there's a fancy word called a statistician. A statistician is someone who does it for a living. Um, large companies have statisticians. And these are people who just sit down and they figure out. Um, the best way I can explain it is like at Walmart. They might sit down and figure out which part of the store is getting the most sales. Which part of the store is not getting the most sales. They might even get down to brands. Um, I think about like socks and stuff. Okay, sometimes when socks come out, they look really cool. They got cool prints. They'll even put them out like on the main aisle of the store. So when you walk by, you're like, oh, I really want those, and you grab them. Well, when they're setting up those displays and stuff, they know what they're doing. Like they're trying to get you to want them. Okay, well, if it doesn't work, Let's say a week later, these statisticians, these, these people, they realize, wait a minute, those socks never sold. Then they're going to swap them out with something else that is going to sell. A lot of it is just reading numbers. And what does it mean? Sometimes numbers are good if they're high. Sometimes numbers are good if they're low. Okay? So if you think about your grade book, of course, you usually want your test scores to be way high. But if I were to print a report of all your zeros, wouldn't you hope to have a zero for your zeros? Yes. It's kind of weird. So statisticians are always looking at numbers. You guys in the past, in your elementary grade years, would do stuff like bar graphs and circle graphs and all that stuff. Well, now what we do is we turn it into, we're going to average the numbers, which is the one right here, number five, that says mean. And my little joke is, the way to remember it, I always say teachers are mean we average your grades, so we add them all up, and we divide by the amount of grades you have. Um, it's not exactly done that way this year because you all have the different categories and stuff, but that's what we do, okay, back in the day. That they're like, now I now does it all for me. I don't have to do much, but we would add up all your grades. Later this week, we will find median, mode, range. Then next week, we do stuff called lower quartile, upper quartile. We'll do box and whisker plots. Um, we do something called mean absolute deviation. So this week and next week, it's not hard in the idea that it's hard. It's more of you got to memorize what to do with. Do I add all these numbers? Do I divide them? Do I divide them by five or do I divide them by two? So that's what this week's going to really be about. Okay. Data is to me, or data, just pieces of information, usually numbers. Um, I call it a pile of numbers. Okay. Your grades are still a pile of numbers if you think about it. Statistical question is the other one that we're going to work on today. These are questions that lead to more than one answer. So if I look at you and I say, just one of you, and I say, what's your favorite pet? Okay, you have one animal, like you say your one answer. I can't really, what I call, make a bar graph out of that. I can't um, make a bunch of statistics and things on it, like a bunch of information. I just got one thing, it's kind of boring. But if I ask every one of you what your favorite animal was, and then I might have three dogs, five cats, two hamsters, four birds. I have now got a bunch of numbers to work with, and I could make some graphs and stuff from it. So that's going to be what's called a statistical question. 
We'll practice it a little bit. Don't, don't, work, don't worry yet. And then that last one is called central tendency. And it's basically what I call the middle, the center. What we're doing this week is working with the centers of piles of numbers. Okay? A measurement of the center of data. Um, this week, total calculator. If nothing else, you want what I call a cheapy four-function calculator because all we're going to do like this week and next week that I remember is either add, subtract, or divide. We might multiply, but it's really, we don't even use the ABC button usually and all that. So if you could just have a, nothing, if nothing else, what I call a dollar store calculator, your life will be a lot easier this week. Okay. Um, New day today, though, grade start fresh, and all that, okay? So, what I'm going to do is go down and now talk about statistical <laughs> questions. And like I was saying, statistical questions, they just lead to more than one answer. There are a few weird ones in here that we sometimes have to talk about, okay? Um, so... You got it? You good? Okay. So I'm going to go down a little bit. Whoops. need a copy of it myself. Okay. Here we go. It's not hard. It's easy. It just kind of, some of it's just weird. Like the question, you got to think about it. Okay. So number one says, it says, who was the first president of the United States? Okay. If we're going to play in stuff, work with me here. First president. You know who it was. Listen, I've got to get through this for later today, so please just, here we go. Um, George Washington. Now, there's only one answer. Is that statistical if there's only one answer? No. No. So what we write is we write no. And then we write, like, some kind of sentence saying there's only one first president. So you kind of explain why, I mean, you could put there's only one George Washington. I mean, something explaining why you're saying no. Okay, number two says, what are the admission prices to each of the the state parks in Kentucky. Yes. Why? Because it says prices. Yes. Prices and the main word is each. Now, when it is multiple numbers, sometimes, you're fine, come on in. Sometimes we have to explain it a little deeper. And then sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's just obvious, like it's easy, like the George Washington question. But like this one, here is your first hint, the word each. Okay. Um, but like to get in a state park, it might be $5 at one and $2 at one. It might be free at one of them. Maybe they don't have a bunch of stuff to do there, so they just have the doors open, you know. Um, so we put for this one, yes. And I'll put many, I don't know, different prices. Yeah, d many different emission prices. I'm just trying to shorten it a little bit. Number three, what is the height of the tallest water slide at Wild Rides Water Park? No, because if I even Googled that and looked it up, there's going to be one slide that's super tall, and it has one number of how tall it is. So it is a no. One tallest water slide. Yeah, only one tallest water slide. It's fine. I'm not in a huge hurry to leave, so you're good. It's fine. Number four, how much time do the students in my school spend on the Internet each night? Okay, think about it. If I go around to every kid and I ask them, how many numbers am I getting? Every, seven. every kid. So because of the word each kid 
all the students. I like the S on the end also, but each night it is a yes for many different amounts of time. I don't know why some people's pencils wouldn't be writing if mine was just writing, but whatever. I hope you're getting this. Okay. Now what we're going to do is determine the mean of each set of data. Now, mean is like our first kind of math with this. The first, what we're going to do. And I've already said, ha ha, teachers are mean. We average your grades. Okay. Now, we're going to add and divide, but listen, here's the last trick. We need to round to the nearest tenth, round to the tenth. So, I'm going to show you exactly what I want you to do. Listen, I know this is kind of like over, you, don't, you shouldn't do all this, like you don't need to do all of it, but here's what happens tomorrow if you miss half the sheet we can figure out why you missed it. Is it you didn't add right, divide right, or round right? So just watch how what I'm going to do. Okay, taking my lovely calculator, thank goodness, and I'm going to add up all these numbers. But I'm going to write down that number I get. 5 plus 11 plus 23 plus 6 plus 12. Okay, so step one is I write down the number 57. Excuse me. So that I know what I added it up to. Now, step two on mean is to divide by however many numbers you have. Five. And I have five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. That is why I'm dividing by five. Okay, one second. So if I divide by five, I get 11.4. Now, I'm going to write the first couple digits on the calculator, but this one kind of stops, so it's quick and easy. What number is in the tenths column? Four. The four. So is there anything behind it? No. no. So we don't even have to worry about any rounding on this one. It is already done for us, completed, whatever you want to call it. That is the answer for number one. That is the mean of those numbers. Okay, so let's do number two, and you'll see the little difference. Here we go. So we don't have to round on the right, there's no rounding because that is the tenths column, and there's nothing behind it. Okay, adding them all up, I write down my total, which is 601. Seven. So I'm dividing by seven. Notice I'm writing that down. Seven because there's seven numbers. Okay, now I get this ugly calculator number. But listen, please watch, especially if you don't understand rounding. Okay, I just I went out past the tenths column, just so you could kind of see what I'm doing here. What number is in the tenths column? Eight. And I think you all mean that eight. Yeah. Okay. So, if that's the number in the tenths column, what we've got to do is look to the right of it. And there is a five. So, a five or more tells us to round up. So, my new number or my answer is 85.5. Nine. I know that it's kind of like crazy to write all that out, but that way tomorrow it's going to be easier for us to check. Now, if you're not sure about rounding, listen, here's the trick. If it is zero or four, through four, we stay the same, right? Keep the same number. If it is 5 through 9, round up. Okay. Question. All right. So is this like the easier one to do 
Mm, this, this is easier. Just look at the number to the right of the tenths column. And if it's five or higher, round that number up. And if it's zero through four, just keep it the same. We're going to practice it some more in a second. Now, what I've got, we're going to practice some statistical questions first because they are the weird ones, as I'll call it. Um, and then we will do some more of the, the match part of it, the rounding part of it. So, start with me on these weird questions. If you will look at the directions, it only says, or what it says is we just got to write yes or no if it is statistical. So that's kind of nice. Letting everybody kind of pass them back. And they want yes or no. Okay, so here we go. Number one says, how many cars are in each driveway on your street? Yes. That is right. It is statistical because of the word each. And if you think about each driveway looking up and down the road, one might have two, three, seven, four. So this is a yes. And we don't have to have an explanation, thank goodness. Huh? Okay, number two. How many people think Elvis is the best singer? Okay, now listen. A lot of these are going to, what I think of as, as the word total. If I looked at all you guys and I said, so how many of you raise your hand if you think Elvis is the best singer? Three kids raise their hand. Is the number three, just one number, statistical? No. One number is not statistics. So we put no, like it is just one number. You got to kind of think of what is it asking. Number three, how many boxes of candy did each student sell? Yes, yes because each student is going to have a different number. Number four, how many cities had more than two inches of snow? No. Okay, this is a weird one. If you're not thinking about it, think about being the weatherman. And you put that picture up there, and it's got like a star on each city that had more than two inches of snow. You would, what they're asking us to do is basically add up all those stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cities had more than two inches of snow. And then is that statistical? No. Y'all got it quicker than the last group. So I just want to make sure, like, it's one number. It's just a total number of cities. It's weird. You got it like... This is some weird stuff. you got to kind of think about it. Okay, number five. How many girls are in your class? No. No, because it'd just be one number. Eight girls. And just, no. Okay, number six. How many leaves did each branch have on it? Yes. Yes, because each branch, you got to assume there's more than one, and then the leaves, all different numbers. Number seven, how many presidents were under 50 when inaugurated? No. No, because let's say it's just four presidents. It's just one number. Number eight, how many times did you eat lunch this month? Yes. But is that like the number, like, how many times is going to be a number like 25, right? Just statistical wise, it's just one number though, right? Yes. So it's a no. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird, but you, I mean, they're just wanting that one answer. 
Number nine, how many apps did my classmates have on their phones? Yes. Yes, yes because of all those. Oh, no, wrong. Go back. I keep doing this wrong because what it is, is if I, if all of you are my classmates and I add up all the apps on all your phones, it's one number, even though it might be a thousand, it's one number. Does that make sense? Let me make sure. I've checked every class here because that is the one that keeps making me wonder. What number is that? Nine? Yeah, it's no. Yeah. It's because it's a total number of apps used. That one's... That one you think everyone would have a different number. I know. And I'll admit, like, for my, my friends who are worried about test questions, we don't do the weird ones like that. I Like, we don't do the ones like that. We do more like the George Washington question or something like that. Because that's a weird one to me. I think that one could go either way, but that's just me. Number 10. How many branches does the oak tree have? No, because no, it's just one number. Number 11. How many cars were sold each day this month? Yes, because yes, on Monday there might have been two and then three and then seven. So all different numbers. Number 12, how many people in the office are wearing ties? No. no, just one number. 13, how many cars were sold this month? No, no just one number. 14, how much money did the different classes earn? No. Yes. Yes. Different yes. classes, more than one class. So I'm going to say yes. That is the other tricker one to me. Um, yeah. Fifteen. How many brothers does each classmate have? Yes. yes. How many pets does each person on your block own? Yes. Yes. Seventeen. How old are the paintings in the museum? Ah, it is a no. You're right because it is at like what they're asking you to do is add up all the ages of all the paintings. It's a weird one. Eighteen. How old is the painting, the Mona Lisa? No, just one. Yeah, one number. Nineteen. What were the student scores for the math test? Yes, a bunch of numbers. And 20, whoops, okay, how many cars are in your driveway? Oh. No. no. Good. Now, on the back, here with me, let me make sure, I just want to check something. There's no back? Oh. Okay, well, for this class, you get one more piece of paper. No, I, there's a bag. No, there's no one. Are you hot? So now that everyone has the right piece of paper, okay, what you should be doing is flipping it over from this side to this side. And now we're going to practice finding the mean. Okay, this is the first concept of finding mean or data information. And look, right here it says find the mean or the average of each set of numbers. You always need to read the directions because it's going to change. The next time it might say find the median, find the range. Then right here it says round your answer to the nearest tenth. Now granted, it says the same as the front did. Be careful like as the notes did. Just make sure you're rounding right. Here we go. So, step one is, we know with mean, we got to add up all these numbers. Teachers and students, for this interruption, sixth no. grade choir needs to be dismissed to the bus lane of this school. Oh. Sixth grade choir members should be dismissed to the bus lane of this time. Mm -hmm. Seventh and eighth grade choir members should be dismissed to the lunchroom at this time. Sixth grade, go to the bus lane. 
choir members, seven and eighth grade choir members need to be dismissed to the lunchroom at this time. Thank you. Okay, so step one is add up all the numbers. When I added it up, I got 101. Now listen, I write 101. Hey guys, get with me even though they're walking out. You can do it. Okay, when you add them up, I got 101. Write that down. Now write, divided by. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now my answer is 12.625. Now, that cannot be my final answer. I've got to round it knowing which column is the tenths column. The six. Okay, now. But listen, the 2 tells the 6 to do what? Stay the same. Stay the same. Don't let that trick you. So my final answer is 12.6. You drop everything behind it. I really wish you'd write all three parts, like this and that. Okay. If there's no decimal, then it's just a whole number, guys. Number two, 19 plus 5 plus 9, plus 12, plus 10, plus 5 is 60. I write 60 divided by 6 is 10. There's nothing to round because there's no decimal behind it with any numbers. So I can just write 10. Now I'm going to do number three. I hope you're getting it with me. Some of you haven't picked up a calculator yet. So, okay, 12 plus 18 plus 5 plus 8 plus 15 plus 2 plus 9, 17 plus 1. Okay, I got 87. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 divided by 9. Okay, now, what I do if it's long like this, I don't need you to copy the whole calculator, but copy at least a few digits. That way we'll know tomorrow. Is it that you didn't add right, divide right, or round right? Okay, what number? Ha ha, meaning we know it's a six. Okay, that six tells that six to go up. Remember, five or higher says go up. So my new number is 9.7, and you drop everything behind it. Okay, keep going. This is your homework. Go for it. That's why I want you to do it now. You've already done the questions, guys. Just finish this page. This is your homework. I have put a lot of reminders out this afternoon on Remind only because of my absence and because of a lot of kids' absences in choir. Okay, so you're basically finishing the rest of these. Most of the kids have had at least 10 minutes in class. A lot of time to finish it, so you're finishing these for homework. And be ready, guys. Tomorrow, this will be the first grade I take of the new nine weeks. You want it to be a good grade to start off the new grade book the right way.